guests, thank you so much for doing this virtual conference. We are very excited and honored. My name is Grant Garmazee. I'm Chris Skibby. We're at my hot shop here in Richmond, Virginia, The Glass Spot. And we've actually been, I started working with Chris, uh, God, almost like 10 years ago, I came through the door. This is the only hot shop in Richmond, Virginia that is public access. And it is literally, uh, it is like the heart and soul of this city. So we are honored to be here at your studio today to do this awesome demo. What are we gonna do today? What do you wanna do? Uh, we're gonna do a cane, mezzafiligrana, egg, dragon egg, and let you sculpt one of your special one-of-a-kind dragons on top of it. All right, that sounds fair. I guess so we're gonna break down this demo into two teams. I'll be doing a dragon with uh, someone, a one assistant. Skippy will have another assistant. We're also gonna be working today with uh, two awesome artists, Adam Childress and Mike Martin are gonna be helping us all day. But yeah, we're gonna have two benches going. We're gonna show you the cane pulls. We're gonna show you the dragon, how we're putting all the things together, the textures, and then the big kind of hurrah moment when we put it all together hot. So, can't wait. Let's get to it. <clears throat> you can walk out of the frame now. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Then I can leave. Just you have to make yeah. sure. That... What's up, guys? We're here at Dragon Ranch, and we have made you the most awesome, awesome demo. I'm with my friend, artist Chris Skibby. We are drinking a. I'm drinking an Aperol spritz. What do you got? I got my Campari spritz going right here. You're looking a little low. I know. Well, we'll get Sarah <laughs> to take care of that soon. <laughs> and we're gonna do the audio version for you guys because it's the hot shop. We were running around. It was loud, as you guys know. So. Uh, we're gonna be doing that voiceover. So uh, sit back, relax, maybe pour yourself a Aperol or Capari Spritz and enjoy, enjoy the show. All right, that was a good day. That yeah. was a good day. Saturday, we're here at the Glass Spot and we're laying out uh, what we're gonna be making. So yeah, it was a good morning. It's a great morning. Early in the morning, we're, uh, I'm drawing an egg. It looks eggish. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. It's, yeah, it's important to, uh, when you're doing something this complicated, to really lay out how big things are going to be so there's no surprises. Of course, we got Abby there, hot shop dog. She's been coming to the glass spot for like a decade. Uh, so Skibby laid out the egg for me, and now I'm drawing the dragon and how big that needs to be because if I make it too small, it's going to be weird. If I make it too big, it's definitely going to be weird and uh, a lot of work for our assistant. So I'm showing kind of we're going to do a tail. We're going to do some cool spikes. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So of course we're doing the wings here. Abby's always a little bit in the way and she gets it for it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, my studio in Richmond, Virginia. We're real proud of our scene in Richmond. Lots of stickers, different friends. Yeah, we're in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, there we go, I love this. Yeah, the Venetian flag. We fly in the studio. It's for, such a cool flag. Yeah. It's beautiful. Love that. Yeah, so the colors that we're working today, they're both Kugler colors. We love Kugler. We're using uh, K65 Opal Raspberry for the dragon and K67 Yellowish Opal Orange, and that'll be the horns. But both of those are going to be the cane that Skibby's going to use. Of course, we have a lot of fun in the studio. You know, glass is always difficult, so it's important to have like a really fun atmosphere, and that's kind of what we always try to bring. To it. So here we go. Oops. Okay. Well, that was <laughs> uh, not ideal, but the object is just to get the uh, color chunk onto the moil. Um, nice transfer that keeps you from wasting glass when you actually pull the cane. You know, marvering it after a gather. You know, the glass it. looks really good. Yeah, it does look really nice. It sure does. Spruce pine '87 what we melt at the spot, just gathering it up, keeping the glass off of the end of the tip of the color, or I mean on the tip, we do not want it off. Uh, we try to push it back so the color bar goes all the way to the end, always. Blocking, get a nice shape. Really uh, quite simple. Yeah, we tried, so this, this demo took like all day and we've edited it down to an hour so you guys could really enjoy it and meet. We just hit like the main parts of it, of course, because 
in Gas World, this demo was supposed to only be about an hour and a half max. So, here we go. That's Adam Childress. This, this might be the best cane pull I've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, um, it was awesome, man. You could have kept going if, you know, you could just keep going. Well, the object was to keep it just a little bit thicker since this cane obviously had a, a little bit ways to go. Uh, we want to keep it nice and opaque. We don't want it to bleed out. You know, Adam and I have been working for over a decade together, so we kind of know what we're doing. Uh, we don't really talk to each other while we're working. Yeah, that's definitely, there's def definitely something to be said for like working with the same people for so many years. You can definitely like that trust to like make really nice pieces and just like go for it. Yeah, I remember when, when you were pulling this, we were on the other side of the room just pulling like little color bar canes and you were crushing us. You were crushing us, this cane off we were having. Yeah, after that, we, I decided not to have a cane off again. Yeah, I'm back in the hallway. <laughs> that's usually a good sign. That it went pretty good. Yeah, you got so much cane out of that pull. It was so quick, too. Well, well, yeah. Well, it's the way it happens when you do it right, I guess. Yeah. I guess I'm used to doing it wrong. As you see, <laughs> um, we, we make sure all that color, there's a good layer of clear in between the pipe so we don't waste any of that cane all the way back. And then Adam will actually repool uh, whatever's too thick. Uh, standard cutting procedure if you don't have a fancy chopper get it all together, um, plan it out real nice. Yeah, so putting it on that plate, what do you, I guess you're just sizing it up. Yeah, I think they were a little too hard. <laughs> I don't think I uh, did the, a proper job of seeing what helping my plate was. So we had to cut a little off each one. Not ideal, but it worked for the, uh, the purposes. I like those shirts too. Yeah. Are those new? Of course. <laughs> well, uh, as it. of January, of course. Special event at the Glass Spot. That was special. Yeah, Davide Fween came. Really cool. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, there's Adam. Adam Childress. Adam, Adam and I have been working together, too, for a, a really long time, over a decade. Uh, Chris and I are both, like, super lucky to have had such great assistants and friends to work with consistently for, like, the last decade. So it's, it's been really special. From what I know, yeah, flipping it around, get that even heat. Yeah, we use ribbon burners that are, of course, oriented to one side. So if you want the cane evenly heated, you have to flip them around. I remember when I was in college, I think I did that and totally dropped the plate. <laughs> Pie dividers, <laughs> if you're picking up on a bubble, pretty important. Too long cane, once again, but that's okay. Everything worked out pretty well. <clears throat> Hell yeah, man. You know, make sure it's clean. You don't melt that dust into your cane. And, uh, you know, get it together the best you can. It looked pretty easy for you. Oh, uh, yeah, this one I let go off to one side a little bit, as you just see right there, but, you know, no excuses. You know, just getting it together, making sure the seam is straight. Now we'll go ahead and push the air bubbles out of the front first. Make sure no air bubbles are trapped. Push the air evenly from the middle to the outer end first. This allows you to cut some of that excess cane off of the top, get it a little shorter so it's easier to heat and get the heat onto the back. You don't want it all flopping around on you as you're doing this. It's really quite simple if you have your heat right. Yeah, we're just, uh, like I said, we're always having a good time in the shop. You know, Skibby's working hard on the main piece, making the uh, cup, and I'm over here just kind of getting ready. Oh, this was a fun part. So you're twisting up the cane. Yeah, this is a uh, standard twisting. The mesofiligrana cane, so when you look through it, you get that nice filigree pattern. Yeah, it was Once gorgeous. again, Adam and I don't talk. I don't turn when he's turning. There was some talking. I just edited it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like to. Talking about sourdough, talking about some other things. <laughs> anyway, just fixing up any bumps. Oh, I like that. 
like this. Down into the rigadine to start the uh, zigzag pattern, realizing uh, I may have been a little too big for that particular mold. Manhandling the glass, it's the only way. All right, at least that's how I do it. <laughs> I didn't even notice that you and Adam were wearing the same shirt. That's awesome. Right on. Did yeah, we're pretty proud of that. Did one. you coordinate that? Yeah, of course. Nice. It took nice. us about two hours on the phone. <laughs> two hours on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, I, this I is it. This is it. Okay, so I think this is when I actually got in there. <laughs> Still a little too big, but whatever. We can make it work. And then again, why not? Oh wow! Wait, that's uh, yeah, that's quite a lot better. That was a nice stuff. Yeah. There we go. So now you twist it the other way to make the lightning bolts after you stuff it. The hardest part is remembering which way you twisted the first time. I would definitely mess that up. Yeah. We always do the harder way for us first, so then the second way oh, that's is smart. It's, uh, a little bit easier. Now look at that butter, baby. Mm. You know, just want a nice Tasty. even twist. It's really easy to get the zigzag uneven uh, by over twisting or not having your heat very uneven while you're twisting uh, the opposite way. Just want to look at the pattern. Pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, it's, it's going. Uh, Swimming. It's, it's coming along. <laughs> well, it's coming along. You know, it's, uh, we're doing what we can. Just pushing it back. Uh, shaping it up, getting the heat even so it's going to blow out nicely. You know, we don't want it to blow out particularly thin in any spot. We're not like blowing out a shoulder here, we're making a, a cup for stuffing. So we want even thickness throughout, in my personal opinion. Man, that's good. It's really cool how this pattern spreads out when it's and now standard stuff cup making, get the jack line in first. Work from the pipe out, always. When you're working in a, a group, nobody needs to work particularly hard. Everybody just needs to do their job. That's like typical contractor work. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one person, you know? So now you can see that, that pattern spreading out pretty nicely. That's going out perfectly. So now we're going to um, pop the top, get a nice open hole at the end, and heat up. One of the few times I will be using the torch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I remember, uh, you guys will see it right here, like Aaron's filming, and when it pops, she shakes the camera because it scared her. So. Yeah, the noise she made was, was, was pretty <laughs> loud. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Anyway, so now we're just opening the cup. Little thin on the end where we pop it, so I have Adam paddle it while I'm opening it. Standard opening, glass blowing stuff. Spread the jacks out as you open. Keep it nice and smooth. Turn fast when you're on the outside. Make the lines connect, the contour, I should say, connect all the way to the top. Crispy, baby. It's not easy, but it is simple. Mm. Oh, did you see that piece explode? Yeah, that was yeah, so yeah. awesome. <laughs> nice, Adam's gloving up. So yep. It's time. Remembering that my gloves were on their last legs before we shut down, and then we opened back up. I remember when he put it away, I'm not sure, but there was like those uh, pieces of wood leaning against the annealer, and as he opens the door, they both like fall away, and I remember it was a little like, oh my God. Man, that pattern looks awesome. Yeah. Watch that wood on the right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's it. All right. Well, while that was all happening, because uh, Chris and I were working actually at the same time, I have Mike Martin on my team, and uh, we are pulling pure cane bar. So we're using... Uh, K152, which is an awesome, awesome purple by Kugler. And uh, Mike is going to be pulling us 
just some like uh, just some regular rods, some regular canes that I'm gonna actually have Adam use to draw stripes on this dragon. So uh, definitely a different way of pulling cane than the way Skibby did, but it is a lot smaller. So this is when I was saying we had that cane off. This is actually what was happening on my side while he was pulling that long ass piece. This is what we're doing over here. You know, typical like competition. Yeah, and after that we stopped doing that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And Mike got a great pull out of that. Honestly, I don't mind if it's a little thicker or thinner in one spot because I use, uh, you know, just where I need it. So I'll just use the thin part for this. So then a case of uh, Mike is uh, cutting it up. And this is actually gonna be for the spine of the dragon. I found out like about a year ago that instead of adding bits, you can just add these canes. There's Abby, miserable. You know, she has been a glass, <laughs> don't stop believing, yeah. Love the, love the glass spot. Here we are making a wing. So we're rolling it in the color. And you're, you're probably wondering like rolling on newspaper. Skippy and I picked that up in Murano. That is how all the pros do it when they roll powder. So make you, you make the chicken leg. We're actually making a wing. Make the chicken leg, flatten it, and then tell your assistant to get as hot as possible, as uncomfortable as possible, and then push in this pattern. Now that tool I'm using, I actually made that. It, does, it looks like a weird piece. You just custom, some, cut some custom steel and uh, push that in. And that's gonna make that wing pattern. It's kind of like uh, making a bat wing or duck feet or something like that. And then just heating it, introducing the heat, and then uh, we'll put it in the, the glory hole, let that heat soak in some more. And then I will pull this into that wing shape. So just getting that heat right with the torch before we actually introduce it into the glory hole. Once it comes out, we gotta move pretty quick. So of course, go in with my tweezers uh, on a side angle to pull out those points. And then from there, I'm just kinda uh, pulling them to where they actually need to be. You only have kind of like one shot to do this if you want it to look fluid. So uh, yeah, so we're going for it. So this is actually, I don't know if this is gonna, this would actually be his left wing, I believe. It can get a little confusing, <laughs> especially when you're trying to add them to the dragon. There could be a, a mishap. You might add them to the wrong side, but we're not talking about that now. Uh, but yeah it's, yeah, it's important that you make a left and a right. Skibby would tell you that uh, when I first did this, I made two right wings. It was a public demonstration. We just, you just put them on. You know, people comment, whatever. It's, uh, it's art. It's art, baby. Yeah, so after that, we pull them uh, to the points. So you just sharpen up the tips here. Just a little heat. Don't need to flash it. And then just go for it because I don't want that heat to soak in more. Um, and that's how you can get pretty much anything sharp in glass, whether you're making uh, just a sharp point on a vessel to horns, teeth, claws, you know, whatever you need to have sharp. So after that, we cut this little thin part and we're gonna actually add a little bit of a horn to it, which is kind of cool. I don't show this part, but I'll show it in other parts of the video. So pretty much, uh, those canes, that cane that you saw Mike pull earlier, I pulled other colors. And to kind of save time, I didn't show all those colors. But one of the colors we pulled was a beautiful uh, yellowish opal orange, which is K67. And I've used that, I've heated it up, made a little bit of a marble, and I've pushed it in. And that's kind of what's happening right there. And that's gonna become a little bit of a horn on the wing. Now we're adding texture. I love adding texture to all my sculptures. It just takes it to that next level which uh, if you don't, if you never had a texture, you should definitely try it. It takes away the glassiness and gives it that realism quality. These tools uh, were custom made by one of my friends. We're actually coming out with our own tool lines. So look out in the future if you want some texture tools, I'm gonna have some available. Um, but yeah, we go through and texture this entire wing. And of course, to save you guys the agony, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, about 300% just so we can get through this wing uh, today. But uh, I did all the wing, I did the back side as well. And uh, you know, like anything in art, when you try something, you're always learning. So I learned actually a lot and some new tricks that I think I'll do on the next wing about where to add some color and where I could add some really cool textures to that as well. Again, we're having a good time. I don't know what we're talking about, probably sourdough. A lot of this video, we're talking about sourdough. Uh, I think it's kind of been a thing at quarantine, talking about sourdough and eating sourdough. We've had a lot of sourdough. Actually, my buddy Adam right there bet me on a, on a movie, Who Played Hook, 
and uh, he lost, and he owes me a sourdough loaf. So Adam, if you're watching this, uh, I didn't forget. I can say that's definitely what's being talked about right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think at this point I told him if he had any truffle oil, he could put a little bit of that drizzled on top. So yeah, so we're putting in the jack line on that wing, and that one is done. We're gonna be putting that in the garage. Chris has a beautiful garage at the glass spot, and it just, uh, it's gonna sit in there and just hang out at about 1,000 degrees until we're ready. Now it's time, so of course I made another wing, but to save time, I'm not gonna show you, it's just the same thing, opposite. Here's the body of the dragon. So, like most things when you sculpt, it doesn't look anything like what you're trying to sculpt. Nice, a little garmenty glass shirt, a little wink for you. And uh, here we go, so the, actually the part that's on the pipe is gonna be the tail, and then we're making the body, that fat part is his belly, and then we're stretching out the neck at the moment right there, so. Man, these drinks are good. Oh, I see you got a, a refill. Nicely done. What happened yeah, to Sarah? I, she's really slacking. Uh, she's probably, probably drinking there, drinks, drinking a drink with Aaron somewhere. I would, I probably, would assume. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where the Capari went. <laughs> oh my God, it's gone. You had it out of an Aperol. I'm so that's sorry. That's okay. I did use the opportunity to make myself a drink. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we're so, back here. <laughs> yeah, so again... You know, we, we really enjoy what we do. We're really passionate about it. And uh, yeah, so just having a good time. And we thought this would be the best way to really share what is actually happening in this video. So of course, this looks really weird right now, but that is a dragon body. And a lot of the things I've learned over time is because I've had to figure out a way to make stuff because I do a lot of traveling. A lot of studios don't have kilns or garages. And it's like, okay, well, we got to make it all out of one piece of glass then. Um, preferably, I like to make things out of parts, you know, make the head separate, make things separate. I can really concentrate on the actual details, but uh, over time, I've had to like really figure out how to make things out of one piece of glass. So here we are stretching the head. That's going to actually be the head. It, it might look small, but in comparison to the entire thing, it's actually perfectly proportioned. Now, this goes back to our chalk drawing on the ground. I don't compare it to the chalk drawing, but it is right in line. So now we're going to start doing the head. So. That is actually the bottom of his head. I'm using a muddler. You can buy these on Amazon for about 11 bucks. It's probably the cheapest glass tool they make. It's actually for mixing drinks, but uh, we love it. And uh, I'm making the jaws of the dragon right now. So while Skibby was making his awesome cup, I was over here doing this. This is like, luckily we had Aaron bouncing back, before, uh, back and forth between us. So you can imagine me trying to edit this thing was a little tricky, but uh, this is, this is about when Aaron was like, what are you making? Um, is it a dragon? Is it something like a rubber chicken? Uh, but you just gotta trust me. I think it took a long time. I would, I would say, Skibby, you, you probably like, you down, come down the road a little bit, like believing like when you see something on sculpting, it looks nothing like what we're trying to go for and then it kind of turns into it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I know if I ask you how long you have left to sculpt it, it's going to be an hour. No matter how long it's going to take, you're going to tell me about an hour. You know, it's funny you say that because when Adam was bringing a bit, he said something on here. He's like, next time I'm going to go take a smoke. Like next time you say you want a bit. And then I was like, he's like right about to go take a smoke. And I'm like, I'm ready. But anyway, so carving in the mouth, this uh, using a knife that actually I found here at our new place when we moved in, it was stuck in the wall. So, you know, you really don't need fancy tools at all to sculpt. You just need a knife you found in the wall. Um, here we are pulling out some eye sockets. This is a really cool move. You really, you heat the glass really hot and then dig your tweezers in while they're open, close them and then pull it out. You have one, pretty much one shot to do this, but this is such a cool way to kind of build that eye socket because you don't want to put the eyes just on his face because it won't have any any like skull to hold them. It won't look right. It'll look like cartoony, like they're floating. This doesn't look good right now, but we're pulling out that glass and then heating it back up and then pushing with the knife and that creates the platform for which we'll be able to insert that eye. You know, this is pretty cool. This kind of feels like we're on a podcast or something. <laughs> anyway, so here, yeah, so this is cool. So we've, I've got some white, uh, and this is actually opaline. A beautiful Kugler color and we're just uh, putting in some eye sockets some eyes right now that's always one of my favorite parts when you break the eye off. I know you don't see it but I do a little like a <laughs> and that uh, it's not necessary but it, not, it adds a nice snap to it when I do do the snap so here we are cutting some kind of like dragon 
dragon chit, like dragon cheek things. There's Abby working hard, sleeping. When are we gonna leave? We've already been here so long. Getting the other side of the cheek. And I wanna say this piece took about seven or eight hours to make total. I think there was a pizza break in there somewhere, but yeah. There was yeah. a pizza break. Yeah. I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so just using that same knife I found in the wall, uh, you know, God, it could be a murder weapon, who knows? But anyway, it makes great uh, lines in the neck. So just carving those in. Uh, one of the secrets is if you want to make stuff uh, on the surface, you heat it and you actually do the move. If you want to move bone structure, you heat it and you flash it. So remember that cane we were pulling earlier? Now we're going to use it to actually color the dragon. So this is kind of a cool color technique that uh, we kind of discovered uh, maybe around uh, this winter uh, when we were working on these chandeliers with Fabiano Zanke. If you've if you haven't seen those, check them out. They're beautiful, but we are adding some stripes to it by just adding uh, pure colored glass. This is the uh, K152, and then just striping it, and immediately, as it's hot, smashing it onto the piece with just some texture. And that's just so I can get the color as close to the surface of the glass before it sets up, because if it sets up before I do this, it's gonna have like a lot of little mountains on it. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to try to flatten that all out later and it's gonna distort my dragon. So yeah, so here it's really cool. We got Adam over here now, which is awesome. You know, we've, we've hijacked him from Skibby's team and uh, we've, got, we've got Mike on there. It really takes a great team and great teamwork to do these kind of pieces. You can't do this kind of stuff by yourself. Um, that's just a great shot just to kind of show you the detail. Adam is a, a, a really fantastic glass artist and I leave this to him because uh, he is just really good at lamp working. He knows uh, glass and heat very well, and you know he does it right. So it's you know play to other people's strengths. So he's really doing a ph phenomenal job just getting that all lined in, and it does it happens quickly and efficiently, and it looks fantastic. So we go around the whole body. We don't do the tail because the tail is going to be pulled on the egg. So we go up to about the neck and then we kind of stop. So now it's time to shape the neck and kind of push his head back up. I'm just using a paddle uh, to do that. I'm not using any metal tools. I, when I move glass around, I always use wood or corks or, or something. I never use metal tools just because the glass is always so cold. Uh, when we're, we're sculpting it. So I'm just using some cork. Sorry about that, Skibby. You probably, you probably didn't know I did that. Um, but, ooh, ooh, sorry. It was, it's, for, it's for the dragon. Right now, if you could see Skibby's face. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was just, it was, I thought it was quicker. It was just for that one part. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we get the perfect shape thanks to these, these giant corks. Um, Oh my God, I thought I stopped using it by now. But anyway, <laughs> so sorry. Anyway, we got, it, we got it down and here comes Adam bringing a bit. Uh, so these are gonna actually be his back legs, his hind quarter legs. So, and we're gonna make, it's gonna do kind of like an illusion out of it. I'm gonna carve a line into him. So it not only creates the back thigh muscle, it creates the bottom portion of his leg as well. It'll also become his knee. And then I'll use just a little dollop of glass that'll become the bottom of the foot. So as you guys know, glass has memory. So I pre-shaped it while it was hot to get those facets of his leg in before I pull it. So when I pull it, all those facets stretch with it. So we've stretched it. Unfortunately, I didn't get the stretch, but you can imagine I heated it up and I pulled it. We've also added a knee horn. Knee horns are incredibly important uh, to dragons and uh, <laughs> what was it? A chin horn joke. That was the, that was, yeah, later on uh, we have a chin horn joke. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had music playing and uh, yeah, we're just having a good time. Uh, really excited. Again, thank you guys for uh, doing the virtual conference. You know, it sucks that we couldn't do this in person, but we are, we are enjoying it. Just being able to get together out of quarantine and, and make some beautiful work. Um, so the dragon is almost done for this point. I think it, uh, we have a couple more things we're gonna do. We're gonna add the feet. So there's Mike Martin bringing over just some foot blobs. I'm not gonna be too picky about this because the feet are gonna be pretty much hidden on the egg. So it's more about them just being there 
uh, than actual detail. I'm gonna detail them up a little bit. I'm gonna shape them up. I'm gonna cut some, you know, toes in there and stuff. But you'll see later on that I'm gonna heat the hell out of that, and it's gonna melt out. So you're only gonna see the, you know, the outside toes if anything. Um, so it's not too big a deal. It's more just to make sense. Yeah, Mike's having a great time. It's so awesome when we can all work together. Uh, yeah, quarantine's been tough. I hope you guys are doing all right. Uh, but yeah, it's just great to be back with the crew at the glass spot where we all kind of met each other. So yeah, just uh, using the tag to shape the glass. I'm kind of just just getting a basic shape in there. This is all new for you, Skip. You didn't see any of this. You were you were working on your side, doing your thing. Uh, I couldn't have been because Adam's down at this bench. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing at this particular point in time. You're like, man, you you ain't care. <laughs> <laughs> so just pulling some toes, some toe action. Everybody loves some toe action, right? Am I right? Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, getting that right, just, just using the heat of the glass. You know, you heat it, you flash it, that heat soaks in twice as much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so... Nice, just fixing the camera here. Um, yeah, getting those toes right. I'm not gonna put much detail into them though, like I said, because there's no point. Uh, you won't see it, it's gonna get melted out anyway. And uh, that's it. I don't know if I show the other foot, let's see. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna blend all that in. It kind of looks very puzzle pieced right now, but that's okay because I'll use uh, the tag. I'll also use uh, this paint scraper that actually I got a shout out to Mark Petrovic who gave me that. It's just a bent paint scraper, but it works. There it is, there it comes. It works great for blending glass. So if you wanna be able to blend stuff, that is the best way. Now I'm adding some wrinkles. Again, using that, that knife, that long blade to just, and I'm rolling it, just hot glass, just take the torch, heat it, and then just roll the blade. And that creates some really cool wrinkle effects. And I'm just getting that all around the bottom of his neck, going into his stomach. Again, using, using, sorry about that, using that, that cork pad <laughs> to get that perfect. It's looking really good. The eyes look sick. Yeah, that's what they're for. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, using, again, that paint scraper. When I teach, I always show all my students all my tools, and it's crazy. Students who have taken multiple classes with me, they'll come back and show those paint scrapers and uh, weird odds and ends that I use to do all the texture. So I decided it needed a fin on his neck. So... I heated it up, I didn't show it, but uh, I'm gonna just gonna blame Neffel on that one. And uh, we just squished it out, kind of like we did with the wing a little bit. We just squeezed between and then heat it and pulled those ribs, and that's what's giving it that cool fin effect on his neck. I also, ne also needed to do something there because it looked a little heavy on his neck, so that kind of made things look more even. Uh, but yeah, I pulled his uh, his horns on the top a little bit as well, and this thing is this thing's pretty much done. We're gonna add a little bit of stripes to his leg just to make his legs start blending more, and then of course we're gonna texture this thing because the second it's on the egg, I don't want to have to wrestle with doing all that because now the clock is ticking, and the more we're heating it, the more chance we are of risking uh, messing up. Uh, Chris Gibby's beautiful egg that he's made and want, we want to keep that shape as crisp as possible This was kind of a funny moment when we're adding these bits again I'm not too picky. I'm just because I know I'm gonna blend them and I'm gonna heat it with the torch a lot So I'm not too crazy about like oh It has to be the perfect bit because I know I'm just gonna heat it. And I'm gonna pull off what I need anyway I'm just more worried about like the contact like as long as the contacts are even that's fine with me so I have pulled that one I've heated it and uh and then I'll actually heat up one spot on the side. And this is a really cool trick if you guys uh, ever want to make uh, things have bones in them or something like that. You just, you just heat the corner like that, take a flash, let that heat soak in, and then pull it like that. And then push away with your knife and you create an elbow, which is really cool. So then I go into the armpit of the elbow right there and I'm just like, I'm pulling on that. And I'm kind of going back and forth and that creates the arm of this dragon. And then we'll add a little bit of heat, we'll pull his forearm because it's a little Popeye right now. And uh, I'm pushing it up too. That doesn't look right, but the reason we're pushing it up like that is because when it's on Skibby's piece, I don't want it to make contact right away. I want to be able to put it where I want it. And if it's already down level with the feet, which is how it should be, then it's going to contact with them and I will not be able to change that once it hits. 
So, yeah, so we do that to both arms. I think I'd just do a quick, I don't know if I show it on this one as well, just for time's sake. But yeah, heat that and then I'd pull it and then I would repeat the process. So uh, after that, we went on to striping those arms. It looks like I've already striped the legs, those thighs. I've gotten those striped as well. And now it's just kind of like doing the arms and adding the texture. So here comes in this big texture tool that I love. Um, and it is just eating this piece up. I love doing this. This is, this is like my favorite part. Anyone who's ever taken a class with me knows that texture is my jam. So oh, here we go. We got you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, got, back. we got you back. I'm baby. on the torch. Yeah, we got you. This is, yeah, it's good to have you back. So we, yeah, we got yeah. Skibby on the torch. We've got the texture. And uh, now I'm going around to all those chin horns, arm horns, knee horns, all the horns. And I am pulling them sharp, at least sharper than they were because they're just like little nugs. And I'm just going to get those all crispy uh, just before we put it away. Put it away. So again, if we're working with pure color here. So the secret to working with pure color is if you heat it, just heat it with the torch, flash it, and then you can do whatever you want to it. It's awesome. And it pretty much works across the board with all, at least all Kugler color. That's how it works. Um, so I think we're pretty much done. So we're gonna do a couple quick flashes. Let me see, we're kind of assessing. I'm kind of showing you guys. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. We're adding now the jack line. If you notice, most artists, most glass artists, you guys know, put the jack line in towards the beginning. I'll put it in at the very end because there's no point to putting it in at the beginning because now it makes the piece super fragile and with the torch we can just add it whenever we need it so i've added it it's now in and we're just kind of doing a basic heat uh before we put it away so with something this big we're going to put it on a kiln shelf and then that kiln shelf will come out on the forks and then that will be flashed and then we'll place it i'm telling mike right now kind of how to hold it he's saying do you want me to hold it by the tail like a like a drumstick and i'm like please please don't and that's why, <laughs> uh, so a little bit of water, a little bit of water right there. We got Skibby on the kiln. You always wanna make sure there's no delay, just a little tap and boom, it comes right off. That's how quick it is. A little, little nice run by Mike. And we already have that kiln shelf set up. You can see there's Look the cup. Up. The cup looks great. Got and a backup cup in there just in case. Yep, that was, that was a good call, backup cup. And it's just hanging out and boom, close that back up. Yep. And that is it. That, thanks for coming guys. Yep. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just pizza time. <laughs> yeah, pizza time, baby. Abby knows. Abby knows. I it's think that's the first time. time she got up all day. That's so true. She got, <laughs> yeah, she hasn't removed it all. So yeah. So we got some. Uh yeah, banana peppers. Uh, favorite of the glass bar crew. It's and so important to keep the morale up, you know. Yeah. yeah. Skippy's got pizzas for us. We got some drinks. Mike is pumped. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was it. So break okay, is that quick. over. <laughs> and we're back. So now we're starting with the egg bubble. We have the cup, of course, in the oven. Uh, the overlay. Um, first. I love how hot Adam brings overlays. Some people uh, like them a little bit colder. I don't, I don't know. Personally, I, I like it when it runs down the side when I'm cutting it. He is good at bringing those up. Yeah, he, he's got a, he's got the heat down. It's good. Anyway, uh, so now it's, it's really <laughs> standard. About time. Um, it's always great to have Grant uh, giving commentary on your glass blowing skills. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was so, saying it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sponsored by <laughs> Truly. <laughs> anyway, standard overlay, push it over the clear, gather over it. We're building up the layers of clear glass now, of course, on the pink bubble. Hold it down, let it stretch out. I always block twice. So, standard strip. We want to make sure that it's going to fit inside the cup. All right, so now we're picking up our better of the two cups. And over to the oven, uh, sorry, glory hole goes. 
Here's our cup about to be stuffed. So Adam's gonna take one quick flash on it. He's gonna break it off. Michael has the gloves on. I'll say when you guys did this, it was like, you guys were just in the zone. Like. Well, you know, you have to have confidence. You can't second guess yourself. You gotta stick and move, you know? These things are. Uh, even when that thing yeah. tilted, like oh, you were so okay. calm and then just Mike yeah. fixed it, no problem. Michael knows what to do. Yeah, He's it was nice. awesome. So now I'm blowing as hard as I possibly can to fill that cup. Uh, it worked out really well, no bubbles trapped, success. Now we're just gonna go ahead and melt the cup around the bubble. Be sure to keep that cup around the moil. Basic glass blowing. The weather was so nice that day too, because the next day was so hot. Yeah, that really we helped. lucked out. Yeah, it really <laughs> so now that beautiful zigzag pattern is getting stretched out nice and evenly. Everything's looking great at this point. I don't like using the handle on my big blocks. I like to cup them, so we, we take the handles off. The cup is nice. It's cool. Yeah, it feels yeah. good. Because sometimes it like kinks the wrist a little bit. This is pretty big. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it was already pretty big and it's not over yet. Nice. Mike was dancing. So Michael's getting into it. <laughs> we had some music playing, of course. I'm having a good time. Yeah, we're all having a great time. It was just like we hadn't seen each other in a long time. Adam and I are talking sourdough, if you guys were wondering. You know, I'm saying, like, you owe me a sourdough. He's like, come on, man. I thought we were just kidding. And I'm like, no, I wasn't kidding. Like, you owe me a sourdough. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yep. And he's like, damn it. Yeah, you don't really cook the rough <laughs> bread. And I'm sorry. His bread is good, though. It's, it's incredible. He's cooked quite a few loaves in my mealer, and uh, it's the best bread I've ever tasted in my life, honestly. <sighs> Look at that shot. Man, that thing looks good. Looks like a cantaloupe. It's fun when it's they like work out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, put that in the garden. <laughs> yeah, that's why we make two cups. Anyway, so now it's all just making the everything one. Having a good time. Keeping everything simple and slow. Yeah, Mike's using the blow hose. Nice. Safety first, baby. Here we go. All right. This was intense. Yeah. Thought you'd come out with a square gather. <laughs> yeah. Not, <laughs> you know, can't say that hasn't happened before, <laughs> but not this time. We got Money. it out. And Money. I like to I just drop it on the floor. We just throw that right back into the furnace. I, I did not throw it in the furnace. I'm sorry. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't take it was not the... was not paying attention. Yeah, to that if you watch, I don't think. <laughs> but anyway, everything's cool. The gather worked out fine. We got plenty of glass to make this thing. The glass looks so good. I took my time with this one. My furnace was off, of course, as you might imagine. Uh, when I brought it back up and charged, uh, made sure it had a couple of days to do a full squeeze. That's the most important part. <laughs> oh, this is a fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is how much I help. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that was about. Yeah, Scooby's like, all right, get out of here. <laughs> I'm like, let me shield you with a cork. <laughs> hey, what's the, what's that cork doing over here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, anyway, Adam. <clears throat> you know, I nod to him. He takes the fight. Yep. I got Mike. Mike. Mike's on there blowing blow hose. Getting that shape right. You know, I know it was like a larger piece, but like it was under control the whole time. Like, yeah, you, you were like chilling. You're having a great time. Shit. Yeah, Mike's, uh, yeah, so Adam's marvering, crushing it. I think we said, oh, at this point. <laughs> Loving it. All right, got her longer. Mike's blowing, nice. What were you thinking right now? 
Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I, w- I wonder why Grant's shielding me while I'm using newspaper. But <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to protect your arm. God, you're, you have that sensitive skin. You know? Anyway, uh, yeah, no, we're just, we're just trying not to, to mess it up at this point. We're trying to get it to blow out nice and evenly, you know. Adam's got the heat. So I'm worried about the shape. You know, we're working together on the turning. And, you know, it's just – it's actually – coming along quite nicely Man, i'm having him thing. hold it up while i newspaper it to get the bottom a little wider this is you know it's easily done it's it's a great way to get the bottom wider if it's hot enough and yeah so now we have this cool trippy egg and now we're gonna you know hand it over to grant it looks like it's i don't want to lift it I guess <laughs> well, we know we know <laughs> it's important to surround yourself with a good team yeah, so just like, yeah, he's finalizing the shape. It's looking crispy. What are you saying? You probably wanted to blow up yeah, there a little more or something. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes see, yeah. Lie. yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think in this part, I actually say, you say, it's like, all right, it's all up to you. And I'm like, I'll be happy to distort this for you. <laughs> yeah, so it's important because that dragon is solid glass, as you guys know, so. The last thing I'd want to do is after all this hard work by Skibby to make this beautiful egg is to smush the top of it as we put this dragon. So it was crucial for me to make sure we got the heat right on the dragon. And I'd rather, I'd rather have the egg colder and the dragon hotter uh, for that purpose. So yeah, so we're just heating it a little bit. I think at this point, Mike might have already grabbed the dragon. Yep, there he is. He's grabbed it. So remember, we had it on that pasture rally plate when we loaded it in. We had that all set up. I'm hitting it, it's a little stuck. No, no biggie. Um, and then I just kind of put it on this kiln uh, sideways because I want to uh, be able to heat the bottom again. Like I said, I want that dragon to be hot. I want it to smush onto the egg, but I don't want the egg to smush itself. So I'd rather the dragon get a little distorted on the bottom than Chris's egg. So that's why I put it on its side. So Mike again is flashing it. And we found this to be like the best way to add big sculptures to uh, other parts. We once did a giant uh, deer sculpture, deer head uh, with a vulture sitting on top of it. It was crazy. Anyway, so I'm heating the bottom of this dragon. And like, remember I said, I wasn't gonna put much detail into those feet because I knew this whole time that they were gonna be melted out. So pretty much it was more to just kind of get the the cuts right on the toes and because all you're gonna really see is the outer toe because of the way the dragon is gonna sit on this egg so as you can see the most inner toes have already kind of started melting back into its body the middle toe is there and that looks pretty good and then the outer toes they're great and that's when I knew what happened so that's why I didn't put much detail into them so here we go grabbing it with the gloves Chris's egg has no heat on it besides glory hole heat and I just smash it on because I know the dragon belly is nice and squishy and it goes right on, doesn't distort the egg at all. And uh, that is the secret when you want to add pieces. You know, you have to, it, it's a give and take. It depends, it depends what you're doing, but like it was super important for me because it is a dragon on an egg that this egg not distort because if it distorts, it might be a dragon on a rock or a dragon on something else. And it was crucial that I wanted it to remain egg shaped. So after it's on, of course, we're brushing it off. Want to make sure there's no glove on it or anything like that. Um, broom's on fire. We got that out. Uh, and now it's time to heat the tail. As you can see, uh, my my torch is, is getting it done, but it's a little small for this. It's also starting to reduce the color a little bit, even though I have the oxygen turned up pretty high. So in a second... While this is all happening, Mike is hooking up. Skibby has a, a shop torch, which is about twice the size, burner size of mine. And so we're hooking that up just for time's sake. And also, that's what he's doing right now. And also just uh, to keep, make sure that that color, and that we've hooked that up, you can see the difference already. Um, because we want to make sure that color doesn't, because if you reduce something and, it's, and then you're working it and working it, sometimes that reduction never leaves. 
So we do, I do a test pull. I notice that it's kind of got like this big golf ball kind of on the top of the tail. And in the past, I continued to heat it and I pull it and that golf ball just comes off. And when it starts to taper, I take behind it. But I really wanted to make sure we had a long tail. So I heated that top part more so that we wouldn't lose that glass. And then again, now heating the whole tail all together. A lot of this is just, you know, trial and error. These are, you know, this is a culmination of failing over and over, learning new things, different projects uh, to get to this point. So we're introducing the heat. Um, and then I think on this one, we'll maybe flash it. It is starting to move and you really have, you only have one shot to pull this because once it's long, Adam's not going to be able to control it. Uh, it's just going to get wild. And if it lands on the egg where it lands, it, you know, you guys know it's glass, it's stuck, it's there. Unless we cut it and then it's going to have a weird cut mark on the egg. So Adam's kind of holding it up. He's trying to, trying to get control of it. It's starting to move. At this point, I think we were all yelling, it's alive because it was moving a lot. That tail was looking like that dragon was gonna bite somebody. <laughs> it was moving, it was awesome. And the head of course is a little off center, the neck's off center. That didn't matter to me. The dragon went on straight, the head's a little whatever. It doesn't matter to me because what does is getting this tail perfect and then I'm gonna start working on all that other stuff. So I think when you guys start sculpting stuff, if you guys do sculpt, it's important to like get what you have to first and then go back, not make sure everything has to be perfect all the time. So here we go with the pull. I remember the tweezers were a little slippery and I could feel it slipping and I'm like, oh God. Uh, and it slips out, I'm like, oh shit. And then I, I was like, Adam turns the egg just in the nick of time. Uh, and that, that comes with just a great assist. And I go, Adam, turn it quick. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm going to the diamond shears because they never slip except that one time. And uh, we do one pull. Adam's telling me right now, it's like, hey, clock's ticking. Here we go. It's setting up. And boom, we got it on there. So what I like to do is I like to place it just a little bit and then leave some in the air because that's how you're going to be able to stretch it and get that sexy pull later if you want it to get really reptilian or just whatever you're pulling out of glass like if you want it to you know really taper down to something really minuscule that's how you do it but if you tag the whole thing down it's done so now i'm just heating it and i'll just take this in kind of like chapters i'll get one turn and then i'll tag that down and then i'll you know add them a flash and then so i've, I've made that nice turn add them flash we heat it again make another turn um, and that's kind of how we're getting this tail to look so nice and realistic. And then again, just like sharpening the arm horns or the knee horns or whatever, uh, same thing, just heat it and pull it to get that kind of tweezed perfect sharpness. And then I'm just kind of doing that, cleaning it up, making sure getting any crumbs, little crack, little uh, crumbles that come off that. Sometimes you get a little, little glass on there and just heat it and it melts right in. Man, these drinks are going down nice. Leave. <laughs> Teamwork, baby. Oh, yeah, you know how it is. All right, so, okay, remember I said the neck was a little crooked? Boom. Now it's time to fix that. Since the tail looks sick, uh, we're going to that. And remember I told you I kept those arms up, and you can see it looks weird. But that was all done on purpose because I don't want them to touch the egg and be in a weird position. Again, this comes from just years of doing that and, like, learning from my mistakes. So... You just have to live with making a sculpture that looks weird at the time because you know in the final outcome it'll look different. So now that we have the head set up, it's time to do the legs. And I've, not, uh, I've learned in the past, like I introduced a lot of heat under his leg and on the egg, so when it smashed down, it's not just tacked because it'll crack there otherwise. So I'm heating it, I'm heating it, and then right before it touches down, I heat the egg where it's gonna go just so the surface is a little sticky and the arm's a little sticky, and then I do it. On this one, I asked the crew, I said, Skibby, let's cross his arms. What do you think? He said, let's do it. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah, I think something. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. That, that's, that sounds like a good paraphrase yeah. of what I said. Oh, I'm trying. Anyway. You know, I, I do like the, the, the arms crossed a lot. I think it's really cool. It's kind of cute, too. If I was sitting on top of an egg, that's probably how I'd have mine. So, whatever. Did your old dog sweet. cross his paws? Grendel, yeah, she, yeah. She, she crosses her paws all the time. That's awesome. Yeah, she was the Abby doesn't cross her paws much. Original little hot shot, flat spot dog. Anyway, yeah. back to the egg. <laughs> so, of course, you know, I'm always working outside the bench most of the time, and that's just the best way, too, to, like, kind of get the angles you need. There I go. I got that big texture tool I'm using. These are custom, uh, custom textures that I had made, and 
uh, I'm excited to be trying them on this new piece. But yeah, we go through the whole dragon. So if you want to texture something, you can't texture uh, this glass without it being on something to hold it, you know? So once that tail was now on the egg, it had the pressure to actually me to push on it and I could add all that great texture all the way down its tail. It's great for me. I don't know if it was great for Adam and Mike because they had to flash in an additional 40 minutes. But uh, it, it looks great. Well, that's why we have uh, <laughs> so many guys. We actually were working on a kind of small team for Grant's work. Um, we were taking turns, uh, hot torching. I see my wife Sarah is on the doors right now. Um, you know, and then I'm gonna jump up, get on the pipe, give Mike a break. And uh, you know, we just keep switching it out because when you're lifting things this heavy, no one person should have to do it all. My personal favorite, the adding of the spikes. This is sweet. This is a Garmazy, uh really sweet technique, in my opinion. Thank this you. Is, yeah, uh, it's uh, we came up with this like maybe a year ago, um, and this is like you guys saw that first initial cane pull that uh, when we were having a cane off at the beginning of the video. This is what we were making the cane for, uh, for one of them. Um, these spikes, and it's just a great way to add really cool detail without adding a bit of glass. You know, if you add a piece, uh, as you guys know, you add a bit and it's like blobs on and it's just not sexy, it's not small. It also can be hard to get to certain spots on a sculpture. This is just a great way to do spikes, teeth, any little details you're doing plants. I don't know, it's just such a cool, easy way. And you just heat the form and then you push it in. You don't really heat the cane. Um, and it just, it's super easy and you just put them all in. So. We do this all the way down the dragon, all the way down to the tail. And it's just, it's one of those things like at this point, I'm tired, Skibby, you you were probably tired, Adam's tired. It's just like those extra details is what right. I feel like makes it pop. Right. And, you know, we have like, again, the canes all different sizes. And that can be, most of them are the same size. But of course, you guys saw there was a little thicker pull in some of them. Look at that, man. That looks sick, just as is. Um, but of course, after all this, we got we to gotta sharpen all these. So, <laughs> yeah, I actually was on the pipe for the sharpening, as you'll see here in a second. That's right. Uh, yeah, you did get on the pipe for a but minute. But yeah, no, it's good. Um, you know, these things are time consuming, but when you're sculpting, it's worth it. I mean, things take time when you do them right and you want them to look the way they are. You can't just say, OK, well, that looks good enough for now. I'm just going to leave it like that. Just do it. Take the time. Do it, man. We had. The fluffy run and everything was safe. Team was strong. Morale was, was good. good. We had pizza. You know, we're all very hydrated. I, mean, I look would at say. This shit. It's awesome. Yeah, and so we just go down. We just go down it, and we're just. Uh, of course, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to put you guys through all this, but <laughs> <laughs> I should. But I, I think you kinda, you, I think you kind of did. It's okay. you're, you're, getting, you're, getting, you're getting a taste of each. You get the idea. This is, this is happening. Each all one right of these. Now. I once did an angler fish, and that has a lot of teeth. And uh, yeah, that was a lot. Of, that was a lot of sharpening. If you guys know, uh, if you know, you know. So, uh, but I, I wanted to make sure you guys saw this. There's a lot of cool techniques that you guys have seen so far uh, in this demo. Just a lot of it. A lot of it is new. Like all within the last maybe year or so. All these cool techniques that you know Skippy and I have been uh, trying and, and working on and doing stuff. So here's those wings coming back out. So they were in the garage uh, about a thousand degrees. Mike flashed it, and then we're just heating the spot. I've of course prepped the spot a little bit more before Mike got there, and then I, I just push it in and I release. I'm not gonna force it too much. You know, I tell my students a lot of times they like really stay on the piece on the wing or whatever they're adding. And the key is to like push it in and then get off it because usually you're adding steel and steel can be cold. I mean, of course you heat your steel beforehand, but you don't really want to be forcing it. You know, it's pretty fragile. It's coming out of the garage. It's only been flashed once. So let's just get it on there and then we can work it later. So adding the second wing, Mike's got it right now on the shovel. He asks if I'm ready. I say I'm ready. He comes on over. Just great communication. Uh, this was a little tricky just trying to figure out you always want to be able to kind of picture how you're gonna put it on Because once once you <laughs> grab it you've got you've got it So I got it and then you know you twist your wrist and then it's it's their money, 
you know, so there's nothing worse than grabbing it and you you know the second you've done it, it's wrong. There's and always a bit of uncertainty. <laughs> Which wing goes where? Where is it yeah. supposed to go? And then we, we finally figure it out and everything goes smooth from there. Hey, at like, least this time I got a left and a right. That was, yeah, that last great. time they were both yeah. rights and we just went for it. I think some kid in the audience yelled like, those are two rights. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whatever, kid. Um, <laughs> he's going to be a good glass critic one day. That's yeah, we need him. <laughs> so I'm just using the cork. So now I'm like when we're moving things around, I don't want to use any metal tools. That's for sure. So I'm just using Skibby's beautiful big uh, corks here. And I'm just kind of getting those wings in their final, uh, resting positions. You know, Adam has been used to flashing this kind of stuff for about a decade. So he is he is no stranger to the awkwardness. Nothing's on center usually. The egg is on center, but the dragon's a little off, but like it's these wings, things are moving. Again, I'm using that uh, paint scraper to blend it in so it looks like it's coming out of his body. Just a, such a great tool, cheap, you can make it. Awesome sculpting tool, I use it all the time. Um, and now we're just kind of, I'm adding a little bit of texture right where that wing went in, of course, because you had to heat it, so some got melted out. I'm just adding it back right now. Again, taking that time to do all these little extra details that, you know, you're already tired. We've been working all day on this piece. And uh, I've just learned that when something comes out of the annealer, you just, you see it and you know you saw it when you were, it was hot Beautiful, and, and you just Look wish, you know, you just wish you'd done it. Yeah, it looks so good. Texture is just incredible. Everything, the detail. This piece just know. looks so good. It's a good one. We, uh, yeah. We crushed it. Cool. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we're just, we're just uh, what they call uh, heating it down. We're just making sure everything is even with the wings, yeah, the body, the, the egg. Right now, the wings, the head, and the jack line are our three points of concern. Everything else is tucked in. Everything else is pretty much holding heat nicely. Um, you see Sarah's got a beautiful nice. weight on. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Sarah's <laughs> on the door. She's, she's always working out that one. Anyway. Something like this. It's all hands on deck. Yeah, so Adam's taking, I think this might be the final flash. I'm sitting down. Yeah, it's the final flash. Uh, this is always a tense moment, but also like the best moment. I've come to really love these moments. I get the jacks ready all the time. That's my job, it seems. Man, that looks good. It's a giant piece. I think you can kind of see the scale now with me in there and the team. You can see how big this is. So we're adding a little bit of water. Of course, Mike is ready, but his gloves aren't close. You know, I have to. Sometimes you got to tell people, you know, back the gloves off a little bit. Yeah, it's not going to go. The gloves anywhere. get wet. That's the worst thing you could possibly have happen at this point. Yeah, for sure. So then Skibby, They're okay, already in bad shape. Yeah, Mike saying put the wings down. Skibby's got them on. We then put the moil on the bench and boom, a couple hits and comes right off. We've this is got beautiful. It was awesome. Fiber really, flax is ready. Really smoothly boom. from beginning to end. Boom. We're done. Yeah. And that's it. That is that is it. It is love all around. High fives. I high five Adam. He gives me the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you yeah, carry this like, yeah. now. I'm like, man, this sucks. This is heavy. Uh, but it was just such an awesome, awesome day. Awesome day. Mike Martin crushing it. Anyway, guys, want to thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, we loved it. And uh, we hope, you know, we'll see you next time at Gas in Seattle. But uh, we love you guys, and uh, we'll see you guys down the road. See ya.
have to make some more sourdough. Yeah, sourdough, baby. Sourdough stuffed with pepper cheese. <laughs> <laughs>